in China and Peru, a seismograph providing data to pinpoint the epicenter of an earthquake anywhere in the world. The application of scientific principles here implied postulates a knowledge of the Earth's structure and of the propagation of waves. In Egypt, 2nd century A.D., Athens, Greece, coin slot machines for holy water, the quantity depending on the coin inserted. Egypt. An automaton in the form of a clock was discovered after the Muslim conquest of Egypt by one of the first caliphs of Cairo and described in an Arab manuscript known as the Murtadi. It was made of red gold and covered with precious stones with two shiny gems for eyes. The cock, when approached, uttered a frightening cry and began flapping its wings. Now these are machines, boys and girls, and in the section here on... Let me find this again over here. Mechanical Devices, number 17. That's chapter 17. There are 42 of these, beginning on page 219. Um, All of these residues of automation in the past, or in a past technological era, I should uh, qualify that not all scientific achievements of the past were a legacy from before the flood. There were natural social factors, of course. However, some achievements of early history and prehistory cannot be defined as creation of man's mind at that time because economic and social conditions were not ripe for them. They would have to be an inheritance from an earlier period. A mechanical effect of stunning beauty may soon be discovered in the Lin Tiong district of China. Here, where China's earliest emperors lived and died, widespread excavations are presently being undertaken. The most staggering finds are yet to be made. Hidden beneath the picturesque landscape lie hundreds of undisturbed imperial tombs, which are filled with art treasures and riches. In 100 BC, the Chinese chronicler Summa Qin, C-H-I-E-N, I guess that's Qin, described unbelievable treasures constructed within the tomb of the first emperor, Qin Shi Huang, T constellations, regions of the earth, and contemporary buildings were all reproduced. All the rivers of the country, the Yellow River and the Yangtze, were reproduced in quicksilver and made to flow into a miniature ocean through some mechanical means. The location is known. The tube under a mound overgrown with trees and wildflowers towers 165 feet, that's 16 stories high, against the northern foothills of Mount Li in the Wei River Valley of Kansu Province. The archaeologists who finally penetrate this tomb had better take care. The ancient chronicler warned that weaponry was set up so that any robber breaking in would be killed. Now, let's take a look at everyday items. Could photographic and listening devices have been known and used in the very distant past? Sounds like an outrageous suggestion, surely. So let me introduce you to some Indian records dating to the 2nd millennium B.C. and considered to be copies of still older documents, whereas the writings of most other nations suffered willful destruction. These have, by some miracle, survived. I might point out here that two huge museums, one in Alexandria, Egypt, with more than a million volumes, was destroyed by Julius Caesar. They burned it. The Romans were great destroyers. They were the engines of destructions, not of civilization. In Carthage, there was a second library reported to have more than half a million volumes, which was also destroyed by the Russians, uh, by by the Romans. They present epics of gods and men interspersed with such wealth of a scientific nature that much of it was considered absurd when translated in the last century. Modern science is today catching up with many of the concepts expressed in these documents. Scientists in many countries are now studying a remarkable translation made by Maharishi Bharadwaja. I'll spell that for you in case you want to check me out. And it's spelled uh, Maharishi is the first name. I can pronounce that one. But the second one is B-H-A-R-A-D-W-A-J-A. And it's called Aeronautics, described as a manuscript from the prehistoric past. It contains fascinating, almost incredible data. The translation has been published by the International Academy of Sanskrit Research in Mysore, India. Its table of contents includes the secret of constructing airplanes, which will not break, which cannot be cut, will not catch fire, and cannot be destroyed. 
the secret of making planes motionless, the secret of hearing conversations and other sounds in enemy planes, and the secret of receiving photographs of the interior of enemy planes and more. Take merely the photographic and audio references in this ancient document. Impossible questions arise unless we are prepared to understand that there must have been a higher culture and technology or an equally perfect technology before our own. Many isolated clues from around the world, inconsequential in themselves, but cumulatively meaningful, show that everyday items familiar to us today were known and used throughout the prehistoric world. Significantly, these are found in the ruins of inferior civilizations after the superior technology had long vanished. They are suggestive of what must have preceded them. So here are some of the more modest inventions, but nonetheless surprising to us, that can be found in the minor pages of archaeology. Egypt, 2750 B.C. Envelopes were used for letters and sealed with the sender's private seal. Egypt, 2500 B.C., 11 rusted razor blades with hieroglyphic writing on them. I might pause here to point out that in the Bible, when the story of Joseph was told, Joseph shaved before he went in to see Pharaoh. In Babylon, sulfur matches. In T-H-E-R-A, Thera, 1500 B.C., boxing gloves. In India, Thimbles. In Egypt, 2700 B.C., Ur of Chaldea, Costa Rica to Colombia, silver and gold foil. In Ecuador, a plaque depicts a clerk writing with a quill pen in a surprisingly modern book. In general, evidence for paper books has been found on all continents except Australia. In Peru, books and paintings and hieroglyphics. Of course, this refutes the conventional assumption that writing was unknown in South America. In Guatemala and Egypt, books made of gold leaves. In Syria, 1400 B.C., several rooms in one library were devoted entirely to just dictionaries and lexicons. In Egypt, China, and India, technological textbooks. In Turkey, rulers and compasses were used when making elaborate drawings for frescoes. In Armenia, 2500 B.C., metallic paint. Metallic paint, unknown until recent times. Egypt, 3000 B.C., a segmented box similar to that used today for cutlery. Egypt, camping equipment. Guatemala, diving suits. In Egypt, plastics, glass, which could be bent and yet not broken, was reported by the Arab historian Ibn Abid Hok, spelled I-B-N, A-B-D-H-O-K-H, to have been buried in ancient vaults. Peru, plastics, small tubes of a material like glass, but not glass, and of an unknown chemical composition were found in graves in the 1940s. In Turkey, drinking straws. In Egypt, 3000 B.C., southern Turkey and Central America, forks and spoons. In Chaldea, knives of 2.8% tin. In India, aluminum cups. In Bolivia, England, Chaldea, Mexico and Peru, finely executed gold dinnerware. In Crete, glazed dinnerware and tinted glass goblets. In Rome, thermos containers keeping liquids and foods either hot or cold were in common use. In Turkey, furniture decorated with gold and silver, bronze legs and tables and beds shaped like goat's feet or horse's hooves. In Israel, 850 B.C., beds and ornaments of color stained ivory. In Ecuador, a magnificent golden bed inscribed with hieroglyphics. In Israel, chairs of ebony inlaid with ivory and lapis lazuli. I don't know what a lapis lazuli is. That's spelled L-A-P-I-S. L-A-Z-U-L-I. In Samaria, 3000 B.C. and in Ecuador, modern quality musical instruments in great variety. In Syria, a musical notation on a 3400-year-old clay tablet. When translated and played, it sounds very pleasing to the modern Western ear. Not unlike guitar music, it was probably written for a harp-accompanied 
soloist. And in Arizona and uh, the Maya, and in Mexico, uh, the Maya in Mexico, they found rubber balls. Now, there are 39 common items that we take for granted today as being very modern. These are called everyday items. These modern everyday items were known as far back as 3,000 years ago. Let me take one more. Clothing and adornment. Soak up the sun in your bikini or try on your pantsuit and wig and then off to a fashion parade. If 20th century historians call you primitive because you live thousands of years B.C., then you can smile. Your jewelry is immaculate, your lack, or you lack nothing in sophistication. Neither does your prehistoric husband live in a cave. He, wear, he wears well-styled clothes and modern shoes, enough to give the traditional prehistorian a seizure. Now here's a short checklist. In the Gobi Desert, in Nevada, in the United States, and in England, has been found fossilized prehistoric shoe 